Hey Robot fans, welcome back to the build. In the last video we got the Grand Inquisitor Saber mechanics all worked out and we closed out the video with a solid full test of the spinning saber. But at this point all we're really doing is plugging a motor into the wall and watching it spin. Well, today we are going to add some brains to this operation and build up the inner saber circuit piece by piece. <laughs> This video is going to feature a ton of circuit boards, which is why I am very happy to welcome the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is my go-to source for custom circuit boards. Every PCB you've ever seen on this channel has come from PCBWay, and for good reason. The boards are good and they don't cost a lot. You can get five copies of your design for $1 each, which makes designing complex projects like a spinning lightsaber easy and inexpensive. Check out the link in the description to see how to get your custom design up and running, and thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So I have a piece of wood here that I'm going to build our entire circuit on. It is a very literal circuit board. I've recreated the current condition of the circuit. I'm not even sure if I can legally call it a circuit at this point, but nonetheless, I have the DC power supply and the motor all set up. I even installed a mini Inquisitor Saber on the motor shaft. Now we can start building and testing all of the functionality that we want before we have to cram it down into something that can fit inside of the hilt. So the first thing we want to add in is the brains of the operation, the microcontroller. For that I am using this super tiny Arduino based controller, the Pyxi Atto. Despite being super small, it has a USB programming port on board, and its castellated holes means it can be surface mounted to a single side of a PCB. It is seriously the perfect board for this project. So I mounted the Addo along with some breadboards onto the circuit board, but in order to power this 5 volt microcontroller from our 12 volt source, we need to add some power management. I made a little board here that will step down those 12 volts and give me a 5 volt and 3.3 volt output which should take care of our Addo and anything else that comes up along the way. Everything wired in now, I reconfigured the main power lines here so everything goes from the DC power supply to this power bus right here and then this branches, it takes the full power to the motor and it also takes the full power to the power distribution board here which converts it down to 5 volts and powers the Arduino. So if we turn everything on, you can see our motor kicks on at 12 volts and our Pyxi here is running and I put a little indicator LED just so I know that that's running because there's actually no onboard LED. So now that all of this is working, we can start using the microcontroller to control the motor. And to do that, we are going to use this board here. This is a little tester board I made consisting of a logic level MOSFET and its accompanying rectifier diode. Think of this as a bare bones motor controller. We don't have the room for anything super fancy, but this will allow us to control the speed of the motor with a PWM signal from the Arduino, which is really all we need. And this of course means we can also upload our first bit of code for the project. Okay, this is all wired in and working well. You'll notice that the speed of the motor is gradually increasing and decreasing. This is coming from the PWM signal of the Arduino. Right now I'm just running a basic version of the fade sketch on the Arduino, only instead of fading an LED on and off, I am increasing and decreasing the speed of the motor. So this is all well and good, but we don't want the speed of the motor to be determined by a program. We want it to be determined by the user, so we need to add some input. That input is going to come in the form of these two push buttons. I decided to go with two buttons to avoid any accidental triggering. You'll see here when the two buttons are pressed, the motor increases its speed up to the full 12 volts. The way the code is written, the value of the PWM gradually increases from 0 to 255 when the button is pressed and writes that value to the MOSFET. When the button is released, it stops writing to the motor and the PWM value gradually decreases rather than just returning to zero. So this way, if I wanted to just back off the accelerator for a moment, it doesn't have to restart from zero, but rather restarts from a point closer to where I left off. This will make the spin nice and smooth. Also on the user interface side of things, I'm going to add in the decorative lighting of the project. The Grand Inquisitor Saber has 16 red LEDs on the front. These 16 LEDs are represented by the first 9 NeoPixels on this 10 NeoPixel strip here. And the last one, this little green one here, is going to be a little more functional. It's going to act as a battery indicator. 
We're operating some seriously power hungry components without a ton of room for extra batteries, so having some feedback coming from the Saber on where our batteries are at will be very helpful. I made this battery monitor board consisting of a high impedance voltage divider and a unity gain buffer that will allow the Arduino to read the voltage of the battery and give us some feedback via the extra NeoPixel. So the light is green when the battery is fully charged at 12.6 volts and it stays that way all the way down to the nominal charge of the battery which is 1 point, sorry, 11.1 .1 volts. And if we get below that you'll see it'll change to yellow and it'll stay yellow between 11.1 .1 volts and 10.2 volts. And then if we get below that to 10.1, it turns orange. And if we go below 9.9, .9, which is 3.3 volts per cell, you'll see it turns red. And if uh, this is kind of where I want to cut everything off anyway, I don't want to go lower than this. So theoretically, I would see the red light and stop what I'm doing. But if I don't, if I just keep <laughs> spinning right on past 9.9 .9 and I get below 9.6, then the whole Arduino just shuts off. The Arduino goes into a loop where it cuts the power to the motor, cuts the power to the lights. I can't, you know, somehow get it working again without rebooting the entire Arduino or recharging the batteries. So. So it's a good safety feature. It could lengthen the life of the batteries and keep them from getting too discharged. Before we switch over to battery power, we need to add a power switch. There isn't room on the outside of the Sabre for a switch that can handle the full current of the motor. So we are going to use a power relay to move power to the rest of the Sabre. And this little tiny switch here will control that relay. I also added a fuse just in case. And now we can power on our whole Sabre with an easily mountable switch. Now we can officially unplug the Sabre from the wall and go battery powered. The battery for the Sabre is going to be custom made, not unlike this custom made three cell lithium battery and it will have a balance charger built right in so we don't have to take the batteries in and out to charge. The absolute last thing we need to do here is set up our connection to the outside of the Sabre. Yes, the inner Sabre and the outer Sabre are two completely different circuits. They can't be wired together since the outside will be spinning around so fast, but they still need to be able to communicate. So we will be using these HCO5 Bluetooth modules to send some data back and forth. This laptop here is hooked up to the outer Sabre side and is receiving data from the inside Sabre, which means we are officially done with the inner circuit. <laughs> So the inner saber circuit is complete, which is awesome, but now the work really begins. I have to go into my PCB program, I have to take all of those individual nodes and put them onto one single circuit board, then I have to order that circuit board and wait for it to come, and oh my gosh, I already did all that! That's so cool! But it's easy to pat yourself on the back for something like that. The real work comes in soldering all the components onto the board, and then I have to build a new prototype, and I have to wire that all together and install it on the lazy Susan and ah. Oh! I did that too. <gasps> All right, so here's the version two prototype, which is a huge upgrade from the version one, namely no Velcro. Uh, anytime you can eliminate Velcro from your structural components, that is always a step in the right direction. I have a lot of new 3D printed parts here. I even have some custom carved aluminum parts that I made on my X-Carve. We'll get more into all of that in the fourth and final part of this series, but for now, we can focus mostly on the electronics. So here is most of the inner saber circuit on this board here and the rest of it is on the back board here. So if we turn this on, you can see we still have the monitor light monitoring our batteries and we have the front decorative lights. Unfortunately, getting batteries in here is like a whole nother level of design. So just for these prototypes, I'm still gonna be keeping it wired to the wall, but everything else from the inner saber circuit is shown here. I also have a few different options here for where I want to put the trigger. I'm trying out different hand positions, just what's the most comfortable. So one of these three will probably be somewhat close to the final position. On the back here, we also have the battery charging for when that comes into play. So as far as functionality, I have this safety button here. If you remember, I have a two button setup and the safety button needs to be held in the whole time. That button's gonna end up right about here where this line is. This is my little tester hilt that I've been using just to see how things are landing. Um, so when I grip it, it's gonna be like this with probably one of my fingers, my middle finger over the safety, and then on the bottom somewhere, I'm going to have the trigger that's gonna allow me to spin the saber. That's what I'm playing with, the, with those three positions. And if we take the prototype here, 
and we turn it on. You can see right now it's a little awkward, so I'm playing around with these positions, but I'm going to have the safety there and then that's all there is to it. So you hold down the safety, push the trigger, and you get your spin. All right, so this is great. Um, just not having to reach back there and adjust the voltage manually every time I want to change the speed is a huge step in the right direction. You may have noticed we are missing our decorative lighting on the front. That's because I had a bit of an accident. <laughs> yeah, so you can see here, I flick the switch and the lights come on and everything's fine. And then boom, it just freaks out for no reason and starts running. I turn it off. And then, you know, genius that I am, I'm like, oh, that was weird. Let me just put the power back on and derp. Something. So, yeah. Uh, I think I soldered something incorrectly and it ended up sending the full power of the battery straight to the microcontroller, which fried the microcontroller and fried all the battery, or fried all of the lights as well. So rather than rebuild that board, I decided just to build the prototype board and we'll spin without lights for now. But this is working really good. I'm very happy with the ramp up uh, code. I tweaked it quite a bit to try to balance how fast I wanted to accelerate versus how much of a kick there was. Like I mentioned in the last video, when this thing starts accelerating, the whole thing wants to go with it. So I ramped it up pretty slowly and I've mitigated that kick as much as possible. And on the same idea, there is a kick when I take my finger off the button too. So. The way it was originally written, I, when I took my finger off the button, there was no more power going to the motors and the deceleration had an opposite kick. So what I did is I added a new line of code that when I take my finger off the button, the motors still get power, but they decelerate also. So there's a ramp up and then there's a ramp down and the ramp down is twice as fast as the ramp up. So I could still stop it pretty quickly, but it's not a complete full 12 volts to zero volts, which definitely makes it a lot easier to control. And I think that's gonna be the way it's gonna to have to be just based on my few attempts at stopping dead at 12 volts. It wasn't gonna work out too well. And those little decorative lights may have fried, but the Sabre lights still work. So we gotta do a test with those. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for tuning in. Next time we are going to tackle the outer saber circuit, very similar to the way we tackled the inner circuit in this video. We gotta get the light set up, the sound set up, all the circuitry involved in that and figure out a way to keep it all self-contained into the outer part of the saber. So definitely check back to the channel for that or hit that subscribe button to get a notification and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.